Hi mates! How's it going? In today's video, episode 14 of Beyond the Dark Portal by Aaron Rosenberg and Christy Golden. Short and sweet one this week. I know it kind of sucks when the episodes are short, but it's all eventually going to be like a three hour movie, so let's go! Nazul sat on his throne within Hellfire Citadel. He hated this place. It was hideous. A disturbing, distorted creation of jagged angles and corridors and walkways and stuff. Bore no resemblance whatsoever to anything traditional. Orc buildings were supposed to be made of wood, not dark stone and rough iron. Plus this place had a nasty history. This throne itself had once belonged to Blackhand, who in turn was only really a puppet for Gul'dan and his Shadow Council, and the whole bunch of them had spent many a time here, in this place, plotting and scheming and generally being dicks. Nazul dared not look out the window as he sat there. He had no desire at all to see the desolate landscape stretching off into the distance. But ignoring it wasn't going to make it go away, was it? Death all around them. This was why Nazul painted a skull on his face every morning. His world had died. Many of his people had died. Even his own idealism had died. Stop feeling sorry for yourself, Nazul. The Horde leader went ahead and ignored the voice inside his head at first. But as he turned and glanced at the skull of Gul'dan, flickering in the torchlight, he found himself responding to it. We did much harm, you and I. Deathbringers. Doomcallers. Both of us. We could try to save them. Your skull, my old apprentice, could be part of that. Maybe together we could give them a new chance. But that's not what you really want, is it, my master? It all blinked, a bit taken aback. Of course it is. I've ever sought to aid my people, that I've become death to them, it, it sears me, it's why I wear this. Once again, Nazul touched the skull on his face, whilst talking to a skull, which I'm sure is some kind of metaphor or something. Perhaps it once was, but you are greater than that, together we could. The scuffling sound interrupted the conversation, and Nazul turned to see Gorfiend had entered the room, along with another figure, a human, or grace and confidence. But something about him didn't ring true. I have the artifacts. Nazul felt hope surge inside and waved the Death Knight forward eagerly. So Gorfiend approached and revealed said artifacts. The old shaman stared at each, admiring them. A big old book. Ooh. A crystal the size of a man's head. Ooh. And a long slender scepter. Ooh. Yes. With these we will create new portals. We will save the Horde. We must begin at once. It will take some time to craft a spell of this magnitude, and everything must be exact. But with these three things, we will not fail. I told you this would work. Gorfin looked pretty pleased with himself, but then took a step back and motioned towards the human accompanying him. We could not have retrieved the artifacts if not for the Black Dragonflight. Deathwing is their father and leader. Deathwing. I truly am surrounded by death, Nazul thought. Skulls. Death Knights. And now, standing before me, a mighty being whose actual name has death in it. The human's lips then curved into a smile that was not at all friendly. It was jam-packed full of mockery. He freely gave us the aid of his children in exchange for passage through the Dark Portal. For himself, his kin, and certain cargo he provided. Cargo? What manner of cargo? Nothing you need worry about. There was the subtlest hint of warning in Deathwing's tone, so things got real awkward and quiet for a moment, until Nazul heard Gul'dan's voice in his head again. You see, even now you fly with the dragon, all unwitting. You fly with the shadow of death, Nazul. Will you not embrace it? Nazul really wanted to clap his hands to his ears, but he knew that would be a futile gesture, and it would make him look like a weirdo in front of his guests. So he took a breath and calmed himself. I thank you for your aid, Deathwing. We are grateful, Lord Deathwing. Of course, Lord Deathwing. However, Despite the seemingly obvious polite dismissal in Nizal's words, Deathwing just carried on standing there. Is there anything else we could help you with? That is generous of you to offer, noble Nizal. I would be lying if I said the skull you have over there did not intrigue me greatly. Bloody hell, could Deathwing hear Gul'dan's voice too? Certainly seemed that way. <laughs> Come, good Nizal. It's my understanding that with these trinkets I helped your friend obtain, you have all the power you need to achieve your goals. The skull is no longer necessary to you, and I want it. Nazul was now fighting back rising panic. It was true, he didn't need the skull anymore, but he didn't want to hand it over either. Gul'dan had been his apprentice, 
If there was any knowledge still locked within that little relic, surely it belonged to Nazul by right. I grow impatient. I don't think you want me to be impatient, Nazul, do you? Finally, Nazul found his voice. Looked like he didn't really have a choice in this. Please, take the skull if you wish it. It is a trifling thing. At that, Deathwing smiled, strode over to the skull, and grabbed it. I must say, I am pleased with our partnership. Seems to benefit us both. Know that if you should have need of us, you have but to call. I shall leave you for now, and several of my children shall remain behind and heed all your commands. Deathwing then nodded to both Nizul and Gorfiend, and then buggered off, with the skull. I wish she hadn't taken that. Well, if it truly is not needed, it's a small price to pay, I guess. Do you have any idea what he wants it for? None. For a moment, Nazul caught a glimpse of something deep within Gorfiend's red glowing eyes, and it alarmed him almost as much as the Dragon Lord's presence had. Gorfiend looked worried. 